All right, we are anticipating uh, the president to appear at the Liberty Ball at some point tonight. And despite the president uh, saying, quote, we are going to have an unbelievable, perhaps record-setting turnout for the inauguration, there were, as we pointed out earlier, plenty of people who were not there, including close to 70 Democrats who decided to forego the festivities. One of those lawmakers is Maryland Congressman Jamie Raskin. Initially, Congressman Raskin assumed he would go just to witness the peaceful transition of power and, quote, set aside my grave concerns about Trump's bizarre provocations. But then he released a statement that read, in part, as the hour approaches, I realize I cannot bring myself to go. These are not normal times. I cannot pretend as if they are. I will not attend the inauguration. Joining me here in Washington is Congressman Jamie Raskin from uh, nearby Maryland. Good to have you on set. What, what was that? What was the change of heart? What, what? Well, I was a state senator in Maryland for 10 years, and I went to Republican Republican Governor Hogan's inauguration, and I felt it was the right thing to do because I felt that his oath meant something. Donald Trump's oath of office means nothing. He has nothing but disdain for the rule of law and the Constitution. He refuses to divest himself of um, his corporate concerns all over the world that are doing business with foreign governments, continues to collect millions of dollars, presumably, from the Trump Hotel, which is renting out space every single night this weekend and through the weeks to foreign governments and foreign embassies. Um, he's on a collision course with the emoluments clause, and the whole governmental administration looks like a money-making operation to me, despite the fact that he said he's going to put America first. He's putting the Trump family first. Well, I will point out something that I found interesting today. We, of course, saw the press conference uh, in which he, he announced the plan uh, to move ownership to his sons. It was uh, denounced by bipartisan ethics experts as insufficient. Control to the sons, not ownership. Yeah, control, right, exactly. Good point. And, and I should say that the transfer of his biggest companies, uh, Trump has to file a long list of documents in Florida, Delaware, and New York. ProPublica uh, asked officials in each of those states whether they received the paperwork as of 3.15 p.m. today. The officials said they have not. Point being, we don't know if he's taken even the steps that he has announced Even the completely inadequate steps that he claimed he was going to do. No, I mean, we'll get those uh, filings at the same time that we get his uh, tax returns, I think. What, what about the idea of the importance of the peaceful transfer of power, the observance of it, obviously, um, you know, I heard people say, look, if Hillary Clinton can go, anyone could go, you know, of, of anyone that would find it difficult to be there. What, what do you, what uh, all I know is when I watched that speech, which was the meanest, most low-down, insulting inaugural address in American history, I mean, deeply divisive and offensive to the Obamas, um, I felt completely vindicated by it. Um, and nobody gave me a hard time afterwards. I mean, most of my constituents were very happy that I wasn't going. But I, I was hearing right. from right wingers all over the country. After the speech, nobody was complaining anymore. People understood. I mean, we're, these are abnormal times. In normal times, people go to each other's inaugurations, regardless of political party. The problems with Donald Trump go way beyond partisanship. I mean, the, the man, he acts as though um, he's completely oblivious to the Constitution, to the rule of law, and he, there's an erratic and deranged quality to the things that he says and does. And this is a very scary moment for the American Republic. Um, what are you going to do about that as a member of Congress and the minority? Well, I'm on the House Oversight and Government Reform Committee, and I'm on the House Judiciary Committee, and so we need to get the facts about what all of these business entanglements are around the Can world. Can I ask you quickly this? Uh, you're on House Oversight and Government Reform Committee. I want to ask you about an Instagram that Jason Chaffetz posted in which he's shaking the hand of Hillary Clinton. He said, I'm so glad she's not president. Uh, so he said one more thing, and he said the investigation continues. That he's yeah. going to continue to investigate Hillary Clinton. Yeah. I mean, this is like a parallel universe, right? I mean, here we have the intelligence agencies of the United States saying that there was a conscious campaign directed by Vladimir Putin to undermine Hillary Clinton, to right. benefit Donald Trump, and to subvert American democracy. And they want to go back and relitigate the Benghazi investigation, which they've spent tens of millions yeah. of dollars on, and nothing's ever come of it. All right, Congressman uh, Jamie Raskin, uh, uh, a new congressman. Right? Yes. Uh, just, just, uh, uh, just as joined. This is his first term uh, from nearby Maryland. Thanks My first by. time on your show, too. It's good to have you here. Thanks, Thanks so much. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.